Can you tell me about what your ideal team looks like and which mix of skills and experience levels you would want on your team? Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent Engineering Management Mock Interview. On today's show, we have Suman who's going to be going through a mock interview with us. And before we get started, Suman, do you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, Kevin, thank you. Hi guys, uh, I'm Suman Bukka. I'm an engineering manager at Mercedes-Benz. Uh, before that, I was working with Amazon for seven years, uh, been an engineering manager for around nine years now. Excellent, well, thanks for coming on today's show. And so the question that I have for you is, can you tell me about what your ideal team looks like and which mix of skills and experience levels you would want on your team? Definitely. That's a great question. So one of the key responsibility as an engineering manager I have is uh, performing self-sufficient teams. And the interesting thing is like there is no one size fits all team composition you can make. It depends upon various factors. Like it could be the kind of projects they are working on, the kind of challenges they would be handling and domain knowledge which is needed. But usually most of the initiatives will fall into one specific approach. So uh, I follow this called as a pyramid model. So we have senior engineers or principal engineers on the top of the pyramid, like a uh, very limited number of people. And then as we come down into the pyramid, like the junior engineers will be on the bottom of the pyramid. So basically we have more junior engineers a mid-level engineers and then senior or principal engineers. So one or two, they would be leading the overall team, or overall initiatives. So um, right now I have a team of nine engineers. So I have one principal engineer, uh, two senior engineers, and then around four mid-level engineers and another three junior engineers. So basically in this case, um, the, the work composition will be perfect in one way where any larger initiative, the principal engineer would be starting that initiative and then driving initial design. And then from there, the rest of the team can engage and then take up either components or modules and then drive the low level design for each of them and then take care of the implementation. And Got that's how on. the composition works really well. Great, great, thanks for that overview. Um, so next, what I wanna do is kind of test and see um, how you are in terms of ev evaluating performance for those that you lead. Um, so can you just tell me about your best performing team and why they were your best performing team? Sure, so uh, one of the key traits a best performing team exhibits is like their independence and autonomy in execution. So how, what I believe in a, in a perfect team every member of the team should have equal responsibilities and equal rights to take decisions. No matter whether they are junior engineers or a principal engineer, they should be given the complete autonomy and freedom. They might not have that experience, so they can actually gain from mentorship or consulting with the rest of the team members. But um, having those will actually enhance the team's morale and also they can perform well enough they should be able to take some decisions and uh, try uh, if, if it fails, that's okay. But the thing is like fail fast and then uh, change the approach. So that's, that's where the, the teams become much more performant. And one of the best performing team I can say is like, uh, whenever I start with any project, let's say, when I say, oh, we, we need to do this, my team actually asks me like, why are we doing this? Rather than what I need to do. So they try to understand why this initiative is important for the organization, our clients, or the business, so that they can do, they can buy in into that particular project and then they can put their best efforts. Otherwise, what happens is like, okay, this uh, particular service is not performing well, let's make it performant. They might actually throw in a lot of things and I mean, they, they can make it performant, but is it actually solving the actual problem? Like, why are we saying it's not performing? And what is the business issue it is solving? So that's where a best performing team would actually go into in, uh, insights of each of the problem and then try to bring in uh, the actual value out. Got it, got it. Yeah, so really 
these teams um, they perform well because they ask you the why, not just the what. They they fail fast and they learn from their failures and they um, have some sense of autonomy. Um, cool, cool. So still along the lines of me trying to uh, gauge how how you evaluate your your teams, can you tell me also about the worst performing team that you had and why they were the worst performing team? Definitely. So um, worst performing the team is like basically. If they are not understanding their failures, of course, I mean, they go into a rabbit hole and otherwise like they won't be able to deliver the high quality product. And as a result, like the team loses its credibility. So that, that's where it becomes a worst performing team. So, uh, but the thing is like, um, there are a lot of factors involved. It could be like, there could be some uh, senior engineer or somebody who is doing analysis paralysis or kind of uh, not taking decisions or not moving forward in the right way that might impact the overall thing. Or it could be that uh, there are no standards or best practices which are followed as a result, like we are repetitively doing the same thing again and again. So that's also becomes like when the team is either not committing to something or if committed, but cannot deliver something, slowly it's actually going in a downward trajectory. And if no action is taken or nothing changed, it soon becomes a, I mean, the credibility is lost and they won't be able to perform at all. Got it. So um, what I also want to do, and this is my, my last follow-up question, is kind of just to see what sort of leadership and what you might do to help unblock your team. So um, let's just say hypothetically, um, you, you know, you mentioned that your worst performing team might be going down a rabbit hole or you, you get a sense that they're going down the wrong trajectory. Um, let's say that you know that they're going to slip on a deadline. They're not going to be able to meet the deadline. Um, what would you do? Yeah, so um, it's it's subjective specifically or situational, I would say. But one of the things I would actually look for is like talking to individuals in general. And also I would be plugged in into the project and the status as well regularly. So I, I would get the hints how we are going, what sort of milestones we have. But let's say if I got blindsided or um, somehow we got into this situation, then I would talk to the people, understand what is going on at this moment, and then what where are we actually lagging right now? It could be integration with other teams, or it could be not understanding the right scope in the beginning. And as a result, like we are just adding on something instead of building everything uh, correctly at one go. So. Based on that, an approach will be formed, either changing some of the scope and then trying to, what do you say, create a new milestone within whatever we have right now, uh, talking to the product owners, or adding some experts into the team itself. Like it could be a principal engineer, or it could be a senior engineer, or it could be um, a specific uh, subject matter expert uh, can be plugged into this team for a moment and then we will be able to accelerate the progress on this and when you know that the team might not be able to meet the deadline is there anyone that you would communicate this to definitely so uh, the leadership is the first thing we will be communicating as in like uh, from the business point of view as well as from engineering point of view both of them will be communicated and all the stakeholders will be communicated saying that okay we, we have this kind of a situation but right one thing what I believe is like, rather than saying that, okay, we are slipping, uh, rather I would always try to find out like, okay, we are slipping on this deadline, but this is where we will be able to deliver. And this is our plan of correction so that we will be able to, now we are recommitting and then we are going to deliver on that. So th that's how uh, the message will be passed more effectively rather than saying that, okay, oh, we cannot meet it. Uh, it's still dangling in the air. So that's not a good experience for anybody. Excellent, excellent. Um, so this is the end of our mock interview. Um, my feedback for you, um, so two things. I think that the first thing is around the last question. Um, you did a great job of showing your leadership and how you would uh, course correct your, your team. Um, the second feedback I have for you is you you had great communication. Um, I'm, I'm able to clear, clearly follow your um, the story that you were telling, um, no matter what my follow-up question was. And I, I have some follow-up questions there that I know you did not expect me to ask. So. Um, great communication here and for the audience uh, these behavioral or leadership type questions usually come up in engineering management interviews um, depending on the company there might be a mix of system design or coding or uh, perhaps just purely leadership or behavioral questions 
And before we end this mock interview with Suman, Suman, um, do you have any final tips or advice that you want to give the audience? Definitely. So one of the things I would tell any managers or leaders, so become a better leader and don't try to emulate somebody, rather build your own style. Learn from others, but follow your own way of working so that you actually can be a trendsetter at one point. So that's what I would actually uh, advise anybody. Excellent. Thanks, Suman. And for the viewers, good luck with your upcoming engineering management interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.